we should stop living this, living a, a half life. Because this life of inadequacy affects us in the end. I was looking at the figures. In 1960, 61, the life, I, I said yesterday in my report, life expectancy in 1960 was 40.80 years in Uganda. When we came in 86, life expectancy was 43 years. It's now 63 years. It has gone up a bit. But Japanese die at 79. And you, the Africans, who die quickly, whenever you go for the burial, you find the priest saying, oh, God has called him, God has called. But why does God call on only Africans? <laughs> why doesn't he call other, why doesn't he call Japanese? This is, not, this is not God calling you, it is Satan sending you away. So, in order to improve the life expectancy of our people, they should get adequate supply of what the body needs. Because now you say there is a, a lot of milk. But this is not exactly so. Because in 1986, the consumption of milk was 18 liters per capita, per person, per year. The consumption now is 60 liters per person per annum. And that's why out of the 2.5 billion liters, Ugandans, you are consuming only 800 million liters, which leaves a surplus of 1.7 billion liters. But somebody with the calculator can calculate it. If you are drinking only you are drinking only 60 liters per person per annum, but WHO recommends that in order to support your bones, in order to keep teeth in your mouth, you need to drink 210 liters per person per annum. Somebody with the calculator calculated that. 210 liters times 40, 42 million people. How, how many liters is, is that? I am sure it is much more than what you are saying is too much milk. So there's that issue of the internal consumption. Some of the people are not drinking the milk because they don't have the money to buy it. And that's why we say, and they don't have the money to do it because they are only working for Echida Kionka, only for the stomach. If they were working for stomach and money, they would have money to buy what they don't produce. Hmm? Oh, you want me to be the one to do the calculation? <laughs> 210 times 42 million. I think that is, it, 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 does, not, it does not fit on the, this calculator, it's a big figure. <laughs> but it looks to be like, if each Ugandan was drinking the milk that is recommended by the medical people, Uganda would be consuming, I think it is 8.8 .8 billion liters. 8.8 .8 billion, it doesn't fit well, but I think it is 8.8 .8 billion. So this one of, of saying, so the 2.5 billion is nothing. It looks a lot because people are not drinking the milk. Even internally, even the internal market is enough. So that is the second issue. Number one, 
more African integration. But number two, more internal consumption to consume what is required for health, for, for milk, for, 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 for grains, for, for other proteins, for textiles, because now we have got surplus sugar, we have got surplus milk, surplus maize, surplus bananas, industrial products, cement, Steel, uh, steel products, all those. We shall handle it in three ways. Number one is to work with our brothers in Africa on the integration of the African market. We have already started with the Abuja Treaty of 91 with the CFTA recently in 2017, and we shall continue deepening that process. Because here in Uganda we have too much food, and in other countries you find they have got a shortage of food. Why should that be? We are going to deal with the intervening obstacles that stop us from supplying the areas that you need food, and we buy also what we need from them. So that is one, market integration in Africa, to deal with the issue of the people producing more now that we have woken up. But thirdly, like for instance the issue of maize, you are now crying there's too much maize, five million tons, Uganda is consuming only one million tons. But I went to Iran, I went to Egypt. They need a lot of maize. But the maize must be of the good quality in terms of, of health. The problem is that you Ugandans, you have not learned how to Handle. The maize is good in the garden, but the problem is the post-harvest handling. You harvest maize, you put it on the soil. In the soil, it picks up fungus, and that fungus spoils the quality. Nobody, because the fungus on maize is actually a poison. It has got a very bad poison called uh, aflatoxin. So, the third issue of marketing is to make sure the quality is good, especially post-harvest handling. In the three ways, we shall deal with the issue of the market. So that's why we say, step number one must be to eliminate the culture of Okorera Echida Kionka. Teach Mecham Keken in, 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 in Achori. All the homesteads in the rural areas must produce for food, but also for money. And there, we have been advising you that when you produce for money, you do so with a chivaro, a sabu. You must choose the enterprise that will give you the highest returns per acre per annum. You have seen that we have got a lot of coffee. Coffee have now gone to five million bags. We used to produce two million bags. We are now at five million bags. Maize, we are at uh, five 
million tons. 86, the production was 200,000 tons. It's now 5 million tons. Milk, we are 2.5 billion liters. 86, we are 200 million liters. So the production now goes up. And that creates the issue of the market. But that one I will comment on later. So step number one, all of us in agriculture must go from working for the stomach only to working for the stomach and the pocket and the money. All homestead with land for agriculture. And then the ones in the town can do other things. So that is step one. Step two, the whole country must not depend only on agriculture. That's why we need the other three sectors. Industry, meaning factories, services, hotels, transport, tourism, professional services like, uh, like doctors and lawyers and accountants, all that is in the category of services. And then the ICT sectors, the ones using the computers, which is a new sector. Now, yesterday, when I was reporting, I was able to point out that we have moved. Because according to the figures, which are a bit old, 700,000 Ugandans are now working in the 4,920 factories. ...of political, social, and economic turmoil. O oh Lord our God, 